Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rio's how-to videos. And today we're going to look at how to read a river. And quite simply what that means is, look at a river, work out where the fish are, where the big fish are, where the little fish are, where the fish aren't, and give yourself the best chance of catching a fish in a river you've never seen before. I'm going to run through a little bit of terminology, so if you read books or articles you'll, you'll read things, so I'll give you a little bit of terminology and find ways to identify that. But let's take a little look at this stretch of river that's upstream of me. So upstream of me, the river's flowing down here. And as you can see at the top, it's coming in from a curve from the left-hand side, sweeping in towards the right-hand side. And that means the current is hitting towards the right-hand bank. It's creating a bit more depth in the water on the right-hand side as we look up. Depth is very important. Bigger fish need three things. They need food, oxygen, and cover. And what you want to look for is the, co the, the cover that's got the best food and oxygen is going to have the larger fish. On the left side, as we look upstream, you've got this wide open, fairly shallow bit of water. You can tell by these ripply waves just down here, and you can tell by looking at the color of the bottom that that water is really shallow. It looks to be six to eight inches in, deep, in depth. The current is pushing onto that side. It's riffly. So if you get anything in there, they're going to be really small fish. Don't bother with that unless you just want to catch fish. And the smaller fish usually are dumb, you can catch them. The bigger fish are harder to catch. So I'll leave that up to you to decide. Right now I'm going to show you how to find the bigger fish. So when we pan around and look at the right hand side, what you'll notice is that there's a bunch of trees growing upstream here. The water's slower, it's deeper. The current is on that side of the river, which obviously indicates the depth is there. The fish have the cover. They've got all the food being pushed down by the current. They've got plenty of oxygen, enough oxygen coming here. It's not dead still water. So your bigger fish, as I look upstream from this bridge, the bigger fish are going to be around about those tree areas and closer into the bank. If you were to look straight above the bridge, looking down below what we have here, right above the bridge, you'll see a really good indication of the two types of water. Right in front of me, the water is a darker gray color, greeny gray color. And what that means, it's deeper. Slightly to the left of it, you can really easily see in this sunlight, you can see the rocks. I can see the water's physically a foot, a foot and a half in depth at the most. Again, small fish, if anything. So if I was targeting this, I'd be fishing this little drop off here above the bridge with a nymph and an indicator would be good because I'm not seeing any heads up. I could fish uh, a hopper dropper type rig. I could fish a streamer. I love fishing soft tackles. I could swing a soft tackle on a, an intermediate tip or an intermediate versa leader. Now, as we go downstream, you'll see some actual structure. We'll have a look at what the various terms are, if you like, of, of the river. Here we have some very, very good differences. And one of the first things I notice here when I'm looking at it is on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, I have this slow back eddy of almost stagnant still water. And as I look to the bottom of it, there's a lot of sediment there. It means there's very little current gets there. Virtually no chance of catching a fish in there, maybe a minnow or a chub, but really in that slow, kind of muddy bottom, just stay away from that. But coming off that, there's a very, very nice seam, and a seam is where the current speeds change. It's this edge between the two current speeds. And that seam is caused by the current hitting a, a, a tree here and creating this line. So a seam is a very good indication of where the food will go. I can also see that as I move around to the left, I'm starting to see some green water again. So that's got some depth. And in the center of the green water, there's a white boulder I can clearly see. That's good in pushing food either side of the boulder. That would be a great area to concentrate and drop a nymph down the edge of that rock. As I pan left more, I start to see the gravel shallowing up again. I'm starting to get faster water, shallow water. Too fast really for anything to be in there, maybe a skerret, a little tiny thing. And then panning left, there's a nice edge and a seam down here. The water's slower and I've got what's called a bubble line. And a bubble line is a really good tip to work out where all the natural food is floating down. It follows the bubbles. The bubbles are pushed in by currents, the food is pushed in by currents. Fish love bubble lines. So try and find bubble lines that go through these slightly deeper waters. And if they have edges and seams to them and drop-offs, you're starting to find some really juicy water that's going to have a lot of fish. And then pan left even a bit more, we come to a back eddy. Again, there's mud there, there's slow water. I wouldn't even touch that. There's nothing I would put in there and throw it then. I'd move down and, and fish the bottom water. And then as you look further down, you will see the river bends round to the left. And so if you imagine strong currents, the strong currents are going to hit the bank on the right-hand side. That's going to scour out some depth. The left-hand side is going to have less current, means it's slower means more sediment gets deposited, less interest in the big fish, less depth, less food, 
less oxygen. So on the left side, as I look down, you get smaller fish. On the right side, you get bigger fish. And as you go down and down, you'll start to see seams and you see rocks and other structures and stuff like that. So you're kind of always paying attention to what signs there are in the river. And I, I call these characters in a book. They're, every little thing here is an indication of something in the book of, of how to read a river. The edge, the drop-offs, the seams, the back eddies, the bubble lines. So really this is a, a kind of very short how-to video. This is how to read a river. Uh, mostly this is just information to hopefully give you an idea if you approach a river, how do you look at it? How do you fish it? Where do you fish it? And what do you fish it? And above all, of course, if you see rising fish, that's your biggest indicator of where the fish are. The fish are rising, you see their heads up, gives you an idea what to fish and where to fish. But on days like now, where there's nothing happening yet, looking at the river structure is exactly what you should be doing. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for tuning in to Rio's How To. And if you enjoyed this, stay tuned for a bunch more Rio's How To episodes. Thanks for watching.